Well, actually, I, I was born into it in a sense. I write uh, a lot of my fiction has to do with uh, some of these uh, in subject because some of these are Chinese Filipino stories, not all of them. So, yun, in the sense, I was born into it. Uh, ito namang collection ko no, is I've stopped writing in short fiction for a while. So, I just thought I'd finally collect, put together all the uncollected stories that I re published here and there for the past maybe 20 years. So, well, in terms of the genre, I think. Some people think it's easier to write short fiction uh, than maybe because it's shorter compared, let's say, to the novel. Uh, but I think they have different demands. Uh, there's some subject matter. I think uh, a lot of people think that, uh, well, maybe for like all local Chinese are rich, you know, so or or in business, you know. So I think in in my fiction, I think uh, some many of the characters are are poor or not not so rich or into other other concerns, other occupations than uh, uh, usually attributed to them. Uh, it's a collection, so all these stories may be a show. Some changes in my writing in the past decade, oh, two decades. You know. So, wala na makasi siyang tema. I just use the title as sort of a, as a title story. Uh, so, siguro it's just the changes. And also, when I write, uh, especially short fiction, the the stories itself tend to be. Maybe a record of the times, no, the passing. So, yung ibang kung anong era na sinulat siya, may sinasabi rin, no, tungkol dun sa time na The germ of, of fiction sometimes is just something you hear. No? For instance, there's a story here in Barrel of Swords. It's, it began when uh, it was one day, and then we, uh, my, my family gathering, and then someone just mentioned that, you know, that there was an old woman who was uh, killed, no, in her home, stabbed to death, apparent, uh, thou, you know, by a uh, house help. So it just started, got me to thinking, and then maybe I think that's how the story started, no? and also. Someone in San, I heard someone uh, say, uh, say na may amo na pinatay ng aso. You know? So again, that, that's how the idea came for one of the stories. Yes. Mm, wala naman. Sometimes I use some, I, I sort of translate no? some, some I, some words into Filipino, but nothing, nothing. In, in fiction, I, I tend, I think one of the, for me, uh, it should be readable. No? So, uh, it doesn't work, I think, if you, if uh, readers need to have a dictionary you know, to, to, to guide them in reading fiction. Well, usually, I, I think the people people often ask how much of how much of it, it is real you know, because it's fiction. So, I think the distinction is not very clear to maybe to readers who are not into literature or fiction, and then they um, they would ask oh, how much of it is real or you know, as sino ka dito. And I think the usual, like, ang sagot ni Kwakinon is uh, no one and everyone. So I think that's also the answer usually that uh, all of it is real and none of it is. Because it, it's, it's, uh, it's fiction. You know, it's, uh, uh, yeah. You know, so there's some truth in all that. Sometimes there's more truth in fiction also, as they say. 
by reading. Yeah, they, they should start reading and uh, reading Philippine stories also. I think that's where you start. Uh, well, reading good fiction and then reading Philippine authors so that it's not lost. I think that's one of the sad, sad things that uh, people have stopped reading. There, there's a lot of reading. I, I, there's because of Facebook and uh, social media, a lot of people are online. Uh, Talking, you know, pero uh, on the other hand, there's there uh, yung reading literature seems to have taken a backseat, you know, and I, I wish there's more reading and maybe the educational system right right now was in my K to twelve now, and there's all this whole debate on what to do with literature, you know humanities how do you what, what do you teach and all that so uh, I think we should teach more Philippine writing because that's that's the most we can do you know. ideally I would like to see Filipino students you know, with everything uh, classics but if given a choice and it's a I don't sometimes a stark choice then I prefer that they they know Philippine authors. And five, four, three, two. Of that other country we now speak, a land of yellow earth and blue sky, where a golden emperor once ruled. My grandmother lived in that land. In the mornings, she bathed in a river where a green dragon once played where a sad poet drowned, reaching for the moon one night. But my grandmother had stolen the moon. She had scooped the moon into her wooden bowl and hidden it inside an earthen jar, where it remains to this day. It is the curse of the poor poet that has plagued our family ever since, that has followed us across many rivers and oceans. My grandmother left the moon back in the old country. For ten years, the moon rested inside her earthen jar and grew heavy. For ten years, the night sky over her village remained moonless. When the time came for her to give the moon back to the river, so that the moon's shadow could once more be seen over the sky, the soldiers arrived. She said they were looking for the green dragon that played in the old river. For it is said, the one who rides the green dragon shall rule over the land of ten thousand sorrows. But the absence of moonlight saddened the soldiers that night. They could not remember the faces of their mothers, wives, and children. Their sadness turned to anger, and they drove the villagers out of their homes. Before she fled, my grandmother took her jar to the family crypt and buried it beside her grandmother. She promised to return for it, but her family placed her on a boat which sailed away further. That is the tale she told me as a child. That is the story I remember.